Thank you for tuning in this morning. We appreciate uh, you listening by way of uh, YouTube and also Facebook, and uh, we just appreciate your attendance and uh, your faithfulness. We are, we're encouraged by the uh, good comments and the responses of the viewers uh, that are listening each and every week, and so we praise the Lord for that. And we want to go to the Lord in prayer. We want to share just a few uh, prayer requests with you before we uh, begin our service this morning. Uh, do remember, if you will, Helen Hendricks, who is having back surgery tomorrow. Uh, also, Mark Landreth is dealing with COVID. Uh, remember Gilbert Hutchins in prayer, who's not doing very well. Uh, talk to Sister Ann on Friday, and he's not doing very well, so do, be much in prayer for him. Also, Dan Petro, uh, who's dealing with COVID, but it looks like he's headed home. That's uh, Sister Cheryl Crater's friend. And Sam, also Anita Avin, Adams, who is in very critical condition. Uh, there's going to be some decisions made uh, possibly tomorrow about her condition. So remember that family, if you will. Also remember the family of Kurt Bain and also the family of Ricky Ray. We've been praying uh, for him. Uh, he did pass away this, this past week. So remember uh, that family. And also Dean Puckett will be having surgery. Uh, and, of course, uh, remember our pastor this morning. He's back with us this morning, going to do the preaching. So we are glad that the Lord is helping him. And, of course, uh, we have many uh, that's uh, on our prayer list. And I know there's a lot of people that uh, is still dealing with this uh, virus. And uh, I know several people myself that uh, currently have it uh, and so dealing with it. So we want to lift um them up in prayer as well as all those that are sick uh, some in our church aren't feeling well and so let's pray for them so let's go to the lord in prayer father thank you for our time together thank you for another day that you've blessed us with another day to worship you another day to love you another day to tell others about jesus christ and so father i pray that you'll help us and strengthen us lord we do lift up these requests of prayer Lord, that were mentioned, those that are facing surgeries, we pray that you'll help them. Those that are dealing with the, uh, the death of their loved ones, will you comfort those families? Lord, give them that grace that they need. Lord, for those that are dealing with sicknesses and other surgeries, uh, just uh, so many uh, that are in need of prayer, Lord, we lift them up to you. Uh, Lord, we're do, we are thankful for the answered prayer uh, with our pastor and being able to to help him and strengthen him, and we pray for him this morning uh, as he brings the message. We pray for those that are listening, uh, the, the audience that's listening by way of YouTube and Facebook. Uh, Lord, give them what they need, and Lord, we do always pray, and we always lift up the lost in prayer that if there's someone that doesn't know Christ as their personal Savior, Lord, speak to that heart and cause them to realize the only hope uh, is Jesus Christ. It's not in man, but it's in Jesus. Help them, Lord, we pray. And Lord, we just pray that you'll bless us this morning. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I, I will make a, an announcement this morning. Lord willing, uh, if everything's go well and, and uh, uh, we're going to open back up to a limited uh, number of, of in our congregation next Sunday, kind of go back to the way we were, trying to keep social distancing and temperatures taken. Uh, coming into the sanctuary, but Lord willing, next Sunday, so that means that this coming Wednesday night will be another online service, and then next Sunday, Lord willing, uh, we'll open back up to our, our limited seating uh, in our sanctuary, so be sure and get the word out. Uh, and I will uh, say this, um, I appreciate uh, the uh, the efforts uh, on the sound system and, and the... Uh, YouTube and also the Facebook and all that that we're able to get the word out but I'm also thankful for the continued response on the CDs that we have I was talking so, to a few folk this week uh, that don't have internet but they uh, they still get the CDs and uh, and so they're encouraged uh, and being able to, to hear uh, the Word of God and the music and all of our efforts here and so let me um, for those that are that will be getting a CD of this service uh, thank you for still listening. Thank you for uh, still being a part of our church, and we miss you. Uh, and uh, so uh, thank you for still being a part. And so uh, we're just excited this morning uh, to just be in the house of the Lord and that you that are listening. So uh, remember, as I'll announce again, remember next Sunday we'll be opened up to limited uh, seating like we were before 
uh, Christmas and everything. So uh, be much in prayer for that. And we'll have Brother Jim come and sing for us this morning. God bless you. I'm not on an ego trip, I'm nothing on my own, I make mistakes and often slip, just common flesh and bones, but I'll prove someday just what I say, I'm of a special kind. When he was on the cross, I was on his mind. A look of love was on his face the thorns on his head the blood was on that scarlet robe and stained a crimson red oh his eyes were on the crowd that day Ahead in time, cause when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. He Amen. Thank you, Brother Jim, for that great song, and uh, good to be with everybody today. I, uh, I guess I could quote the great theologian who said, it's me, it's me, it's Ernest T. Oh, wait a minute, he wasn't a theologian, was he? But anyway, I am so thankful uh, to be back again on my feet and uh, behind the pulpit. Of course, uh, you've heard the old adage, I'm not hitting on eight cylinders. Maybe I can get my four cylinders to work for me anyway. But uh, anyway, thank you, folks, for watching today, and I appreciate the good job that Brother Bruce has been doing, how I appreciate so much the good preaching, and I've been listening and enjoying it. Appreciate our faithful guys back there in the uh, sound booth, uh, the good job they do with, the, uh, with uh, helping us with our Facebook uh, and, and live streaming. Appreciate the song this morning, and uh, even though I would much prefer looking into the eyes of the congregation, yet it is what it is, and I'm still thankful that we can still uh, be with you and still have the opportunity of coming by way of Facebook or YouTube. So um, anyway, 
uh, after say, saying that, would you turn in your Bibles today to the book of Philippians chapter number 4. Philippians chapter number 4. Uh, while you're turning, let me just say this. I want to thank the church and I want to thank, of course, the, the kind comments that folks have been making uh, over uh, the internet and so forth for watching, viewing the services through YouTube. But I appreciate so much your love, your prayers, uh, your thoughts, your cards, your kind words, uh, the food that's been sent, and uh, just every, all of the support that this church has graciously given uh, while I've been on vacation for five weeks. Oh, sorry about that, not really that. But anyway, but thank you so much. And I say it from the depth of my heart, I appreciate so much the love, the support of this church. And I know Bruce will agree with me when I say it seemed like it's kind of in the DNA of this church uh, to have patience and love and kindness uh, in spite of all of our weaknesses. And so uh, I appreciate that this morning. Now, with your Bibles open to the book of Philippians, uh, chapter number four, I want to speak today on the subject, what have we learned in 2020? That's going to be my basic thought. What have we learned in 2020? I will say today that I think that all of life's experiences should be a learning curve. And as we look back on the uh, disappointments, the uh, depress depressive things that's happened, and the sicknesses and so much of the terrible things that's transpired in the year 2020, I still think we need to leave uh, the door open to the understanding that there is a learning curve. In other words, there's much, that, uh, there's much that can be learned as we look back in retrospect, looking through the rearview mirror and looking at the year 2020. And that's what I want to deal with today. Now in Philippians chapter number 4, and uh, let me begin reading at verse number 10. Um, I, I guess I could say this morning, I bet, it seemed like I've been out of gear so long that maybe I need to take a seminar on preaching again. <laughs> I don't know the last time that uh, I missed uh, so much time from the pulpit. Of course, I was in Iraq, but I was preaching there, you know, as a chaplain. But as far as actually not preaching, I, I honestly cannot remember the, the last time I missed five, I, it's, what been, what's been, Bruce, five Sundays? Five Sundays in a row. So uh, I may need a seminar again on preaching. <laughs> anyway, look at verse number 10, folks, if you have your Bibles open. Paul said, but I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again, wherein ye were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I've learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. Now, that particular verse is going to be my verse text today, but let me keep reading just a little bit further. Paul said, I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound everywhere and in all things. I'm instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. And then note verse 13, he said, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, it's such a joy today to uh, be back in church and how I appreciate so much that tremendous song that does remind us of the fact that when Jesus died upon that cross, we truly were on his mind. And I thank you, Father, for uh, the omniscience of God, where God was able to look down and can look down through the centuries of time and can know in advance as well as all that's transpired in the past because he's God. And we know that even before the foundations of the world, even before... God even became man. We know that God had already developed a plan, and that plan involved the cross. Thank you, Father, for the provision that is in the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, Heavenly Father, bless today the preaching of the Word of God. Help us to realize that there is a learning curve as we look back on the year 2020. And Lord, help us today to not only glean, but to learn much. And Father in heaven, meet needs today in people's hearts. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Now, I want us to think about this great passage of Scripture. And I want us to understand that there is a context not only in the Scriptures, but there's an application that 
uh, can be made, which I think is relative to where we are today as we have this service. Now, I have, uh, I failed to mention something earlier, folks. I, I, I said that I have appreciated and enjoyed the good messages of Brother Bruce, and uh, I appreciate the good job he's done. But let me say something else. I've also listened to another good preacher. You know who that preacher is? Her name is Carol. Um, I know a lot of the church ladies had given me some instruction. Now, pay close attention to Carol, you know, when, you're, uh, when I was sick. And uh, she was a good nurse, and I want to, of course, take the opportunity today uh, to say how much I appreciate my wife and uh, how she has been such a good, quote, unquote, nurse in my, in my recovery. Now, coming back here uh, to this text, today is the second Sunday of the new year. But yet, uh, as we think about the new year, as, uh, as I look back and know that I was not able to be here for uh, the Christmas season and was unable to preach Christmas messages, and I traditionally, of course, have done that, and then to think that now here it is the new year, even though uh, I was not able to be here the first Sunday, I still would like to take this opportunity today to give a New Year's challenge as uh, we think of a new coming year. Now, in looking back at the year 2020, uh, in many ways, uh, we view the year 2020 as being just like a robber. The year was a robber. It robbed us of many things. The year 2020 robbed many people of peace and security. It robbed us uh, from the ability to uh, conduct church services as we normally would. It took a toll on us in more ways than one. The year 2020 was a year that will go down in infamy, I suppose we could say. And uh, we've, we've made many comments, and Brother Bruce has uh, touched on the, uh, some of the elements involved in this last depressing year. And of course, the, the virus even now, the fact that even after all of these months, we're still dealing with some of the major, it seemed like there's been an uptick even in our area. And uh, consequently, due to that today, I'm looking out across this auditorium again, and even though it's the beginning of a new year, it almost seems to indicate that we're not starting off on a very good path, uh, uh, even with the, the new year that's coming. But I think, though, that we basically still need to not see just the negative. We need to recognize the positive. And by the way, there is some positive. And I'm going to touch on that a moment, in a few moments. Uh, as I look out across this building today, I am glad to see Brother Bruce and Brother Jim and uh, uh, John and, uh, uh, and uh, Nathan. <laughs> you can tell I've been going too long. Nathan, and then Gerald's here today. And uh, it's so good to see you. But I've got to say, I'd love to be staring in the faces of the whole congregation today. And that's an understatement, of course, but it's true. But we're, it is what it is. And so we're doing what we can do based upon the circumstances. Now, the pandemic has taken a toll in many ways. The worst thing that's come out of it, of course, has been the fact that thousands of people uh, have literally died. And that's a tragic, tragic thing. Now, since I have been out of this pulpit, many of our church have become sick. Many people have suffered physically, and some people have left us. I think of uh, the two deacons of our church that recently passed away, and due to the circumstances, we know that Brother Bruce had to do just simply a graveside type service because everything has been altered and changed around from what it had been. And it's so terrible. The grief that has been brought on by the pandemic is unimaginable. Some have suffered, and then some have died, and some have died alone. I still think of how uh, this past year, a good friend of mine from Rowan County was in, a, was in the Rowan Hospital, and this individual had a terminal illness, and this individual died alone, literally. The family could not even be with them. So when we look back and we consider the dismal things that's happened last year under the name of the virus, it's hurtful, it's grie grieving. 
And so for that, we look back and we look back with grief. We've started a new year with our heads full of questions. Many of us today are wondering about some things. The word why comes to our mind. Uh, why does it seem that the new year is starting out on the same note that the last year was on? Uh, it seems like things are even bad to this point. And we wonder, we question, is it going to get worse? Now there's a quick theological, there's a simple theological answer to the grief, to the sorrow, to the sickness, to the problems that we see in this world today. That theological answer is found in one simple three-letter word. It's called sin. Because of sin, our world is suffering. Because of sin, people die. Because of sin, people hurt. Because of sin, people do bad things. You see, it's because of sin. So we that understand our Bibles know that. Now, 2020, yes, we can say it turned out to be a doozy. The year turned out to be a doozy when it comes to terrible things going on, but yet not all things that went on in 2020 were bad, whether we want to accept it or not. We tend to write the year off and say it was all bad, but we understand that's not the case. In fact, 2020 was not a total washout. It really wasn't. Whether we learn something or not doesn't change initial fact. Truth is still truth. Whether we believe it or not, truth is still truth. And fact is still fact whether we learn it or not. For example, like, um, for example, let's look at mathematics. Two plus two is four. Whether we know it or not, whether we believe it or not, there are certain laws that are in concrete. There are certain things that are true whether we believe it or not. So now, we can look back at the last year. We can say it was a terrible year, and yes, it was. But I'm here to say today that it wasn't all bad, whether we believe it or not. And I want us to think about it. In fact, God was good in 2020, whether we believe it or not. And by the way, I have a verse for that. The Bible says... In Psalm 65 and verse number 11, Thou crownest the year with thy goodness, in thy paths drop fatness. Let that soak in. The psalmist said, Thy crownest the year with thy goodness. Now God said that, right? We have to accept it. So we can say today, that God was good in 2020. He was good. Now, the pandemic wasn't good. People dying wasn't good. Sin is not good. And suffering is not good. But God is good. God's good. And that verse, of course, proves it. 2020 was a year of suffering, a year of hurting, a year of, of, of uncertainty, and a year of, of, of uh, a year of disappointment. A year of disappointment. Also, it was a good year to learn some things. I think this morning we ought to look back at 2020 with our thinking hats on, doing some pondering, doing some reflecting, and considering what we learned. In other words, we don't just throw it in a wastebasket, so to speak, and forget about it. God would have had us to learn some vital truths of 2020 that we carry over into this year that have some positive things involved. Now, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 1, verse number 5, a wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. So it says a wise man will increase learning. Now, now's where we come to this text. Think about it for just a moment. What about the person behind this verse? He said, I've learned 
in whatsoever state of state, state I'm in, therewith to be content. Now, what about that person? Do you realize that Paul didn't have a whole lot to look forward to? Do you realize that when he makes that statement right there, I mean, look what, what's going to happen to him. Consider where he was going. Consider where he was. But yet look what he learned. I mean, from the human standpoint, what did Paul have to look forward to? He was in prison. He was going to die a martyr's death. He was confined. In fact, he got so lonely he had no friends. He even in, at, at one time sent to have his cloak brought to him, his clothing, his cold. He wanted his books. He didn't have a whole lot to look forward to except dying. But yet, in this great book, which I love to preach from and have preached from it many times, he talks about joy. He talks about peace. He talks about contentment. He says, I have learned in whatsoever state of men, therewith to be content. He learned a great lesson. He learned to be content. My, what a learning curve. He learned to be a, a content. Now, you know, <clears throat> learning is so important. Uh, as long as we learn the right thing. Now, for example, we could talk about the academic world. You know, to get a good education, you've got to go to the right school. And may I say today that I have more respect for a person without a college degree, without a seminary degree, than someone with a PhD from a liberal and God-denying institution. I have more respect for a person that, uh, that may not have a whole lot of education, but yet they have fear of God and their mind is right and they have not been trained in divisive doctrine that is so terrible. I have more respect for a person in that category than someone strutting around with a PhD coming from that liberal and God-denying institution. I really do. So to get a good education, a person has to go to the right school. Now, how did Paul learn to be content? That's the question. How in the world did he learn to be content? Well, let me put it simple. He was saved. He was satisfied with Jesus. And his spiritual state gave him contentment in his suffering state. Did you hear what I said? Yeah, I, still, I can still move around a little bit. I don't have quite the jump. But I still get thrilled when I think about that. The Apostle Paul said, I've learned in whatsoever state I'm in, therewith to be content. I'm repeating what I said. Now how was he content? Because his spiritual state enabled him to be contented in his suffering state. He was in a suffering state. He wasn't in the state of North Carolina. He wasn't in the state of Virginia. He wasn't in the state of uh, Pennsylvania. He, we could say he was, in a suffer, he was in a state called suffering. He was in prison. But yet he still was able uh, to be content. Now look back. If I ask for a show of hands right now, of course I wouldn't see your hands in the air of you folks that are watching uh, uh, in the internet. But in here, if I were to ask for a show of hands, and I'd say, how many of you have suffered? In the year 2020, every single one of us would raise our hands because we have in some way, shape, or form. We've suffered mentally. We've suffered spiritually. We've suffered uh, emotionally. We've suffered uh, uh, in more ways than one. Maybe not all have suffered physically, but we've suffered psychologically and mentally because, again, we've been impacted. Our lives have been changed. Uh, life is not normal. Let's face it. Uh, when I became pastor of the Smith Grove Baptist Church, back there now over 20 years ago, I, I, there wasn't any thoughts in my mind that I'd ever be standing in this pulpit on a Sunday morning 
And I'd be looking out across a building practically empty. And I'd see pews that were marked off. I mean, who would have thought? Let's face it. Our lives have been impacted and changed and we've suffered. I suffer and Brother Bruce suffers as men with a pastor's heart who knows why we have to have church, who knows why we're here, who knows what, what we should be able to expect because it's about reaching people and feeding people and encouraging people and yes, thank God for the medium that we've had but there's still no substitute for these pews being full of people listening and being edified in person, eyeball to eyeball. But we do the best we can, but it's still a type of suffering that none of us like. But now, I want to repeat something. When our spiritual state is right, follow what I'm saying, folks out there. When our spiritual state is right, we can be content in spite of suffering. Not because of suffering, but in spite of suffering. We can still be uh, a content. Now, we're not to be content with the fact of the virus and the fact of these uncertain political times, but we are to be content in spite of them in the person of our Savior. And if there's anything that any of us should have learned this past year, whether we look at the things that's happened in terms of the physical, whether we look at the things that have happened in, in terms of the sicknesses, the virus, and people dying and all that, if there's anything, and, and, and tie po politics in that too, if there's anything that we can learn when we look back and see the terrible things that's happened this past year, We've learned that we need God. This should be a wake-up call. This should bring us to our senses, help us to realize that our hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. These times should wean us from any dependence upon man, upon politics, upon our health, upon these things. I mean, I stand here today preaching to you never realizing if I could have looked back over the past year that I'd be laid up in a hospital, unable to be preaching. I mean, who could imagine these things happening to us? We should have learned the fact that life is uncertain. We're frail people. And man will let us down. Politicians will fail us. But thank God today, Jesus will never fail us. Our hope is in the Lord. And in spite of all of these things that's happening, we're not to be content because they're happening. We're not to be, not to be content because of these terrible things. But we can still be content in spite of them. In spite of them. We who may have had physical issues this past year are still to be content in the person of our Savior. Uh, I'm just going to, I don't really have an outline today per se. Uh, I just, I'm, I'm trying to be very practical uh, this morning if I might. But I want to ask this question, how do we reach the state of contentment? Question, how do we reach the state of contentment? Now again, go back to the text. Paul said, I have learned, note that. He said, I have learned in whatsoever state of men therewith to be content. Okay, how do we reach the state of contentment? The answer is right there in that verse. Paul said, I have learned. Let that sink in, I have learned. In other words, it's by learning. Let me seek... <coughs> to pull something out of this verse here. He said, I have learned in whatsoever state of men therewith to be content. What did he learn? You see, he got contentment through learning. But he learned the right thing. First of all, well, no, no first of all, really at all, let me just say this. He learned to be content because first of all, he knew the Lord 
He was a saved person. But he learned contentment because not only did he know the Lord, but he knew things about the Lord. He studied the Lord. He knew what to expect. He, uh, he was content because he knew the Lord well enough to know that God had a reason for him being in prison. And he knew the Lord well enough to know that God was going to take care of him all the way to the end. So he could be content because he had a deeper understanding of the Lord and he realized that in spite of all of these things that had happened to him, God had not lost any ground in being good, in being faithful, in being loving, and in being controlled. If we could only learn that, not simply knowing the Lord, that's the starting point, but knowing about him, getting to know more about him, helps us to be able to be content in spite of things. Let me illustrate it this way. There was a ship one time that got caught in a terrible storm. Passengers were scurrying all around on board, scared to death. There was a young guy who was one of the passengers that people began to notice. This young guy was just as happy as a lark. This young guy didn't seem concerned at all. It was a terrible storm. It was a small craft, and uh, there were risks involved. But this young guy, he didn't seem to be bothered. So finally, someone walked up to him. They said, young man, uh, we've, I've noticed, this guy in particular asked him, he said, I've noticed that you seem to not be scared. You don't seem to be bothered. And the man asked him, he said, why? And the young guy's response was, because my daddy is the captain. My daddy is the captain. In other words, this young guy had full confidence in his daddy's ability to pilot that ship, to do the right thing. And so that, that, that accounted for his calmness. You know, that's what I'm talking about today. When we realize that God is a captain, when we realize that he's totally able, when we realize not only know him as our Lord and our Savior, but know about him to realize that God never brings us to a place in life but what he doesn't have a reason and there's a learning curve involved and we can develop and grow and in the end look back and say, my, wasn't God good? You see, that's what I'm talking about this morning. So how do we reach that contentment? By learning. We can weather the storms because we know he's a captain of the ship. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12. Paul said, For the which cause I also, catch this, suffer these things. Then he throws in a great word, nevertheless. He said, For the which cause I also suffer these things, nevertheless. I'm not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. He said, nevertheless, I know whom I have believed. Now praise God, that says it right there. We can say in the midst of the virus, we can say in the midst of all of the terrible things, nevertheless, I know whom I have believed and am persuaded. Praise the Lord, nothing in life destroys our persuasion. When we've learned and we've learned more truths about not only who God is, but what God has done. Nevertheless, I know whom I have believed. I'll tell you, that's shouting grounds. I mean, I'd like to shout right now, but I'm afraid I might rip a seam out or something. But it's thrilling to learn that. You see, so how do we reach the state of contentment? By learning. Could I challenge all of us that are here in this building and all of you that are watching out there, could I challenge us, challenge us all 
to spend less time pondering, surveying, worrying about, having eyes upon the problems in our world today and spend more time focusing, pondering, majoring upon who God is and what he's done. I'm telling you, that'll get us through this just like nothing else will. Then secondly, well, I'm saying how do we reach the state of contentment? By learning. Secondly, how do we learn? How do we learn? Well, I'd say, and I've already touched on it, enroll in his schoolhouse. That's how we learn. Enroll in his schoolhouse. Learn of him. Learn of his ways. And you know that uh, the, the, the basic manual in this schoolhouse of learning is right here in my hand. The basic manual. You know, I suspicion, and I, I've learned this down through the years, we can't, we can't always assume. In fact, you can't assume hardly anything. Sometimes we get the tendency, we think, we're thinking, well, all of God's people have really grown through this. All of God's people are closer to the Lord through this because we've been taught we need the Lord. But I, but, but, but that's, a, that's a naive statement, really. I suspicion that right now there are people that have gone through this that have not gained ground. Isn't that a fair statement? I believe that there are Christians that have not gained spiritual ground through this. They haven't learned. And so, basically, the pandemic year has taken a toll on some people's spiritual lives. You'd think that people that can't go anywhere, that would be confined to stay at home, you'd think that they'd tr turn into tremendous Bible students, wouldn't you? You know, they got time to read their Bible. They got time to pray. They got time to study. But guess what? Human nature is what it is. It's funny how human nature is. It's funny how a lot of times initially, like when we, uh, when we had 9 uh, or 9-11, you know, when we got terrorists hit us. It's funny how it caused churches to open up more in the sense that more people praying and uh, that was on people's minds and we felt the need of God. But then as time went on, we lost that quote unquote revival mood, didn't we? Things went back to normal. So that's, that's the same thing with what I'm talking about here. We started out having to stay at home and some people said, yeah, now I'm going to really get into the Bible and I'm going to study and I'm going to pray more and I'm going to, I'm going to kind of pick up the, uh, uh, the loose end, so to speak, the spiritual needs area. But what happened for, for some, not all, but for some, they started to take that for granted. And some have lost spiritual ground, not in their Bibles, not praying. And that's what, that's what I'm saying that's where the problem sets in. So coming back now to my point, though, how do we learn? How do we really learn? He said, I learned in whatsoever state of men, therewith to be content. How do we learn? Enroll in his schoolhouse. Learn of him. Learn of his ways in the book of books of the Bible. Loyalty to our Constitution is... Uh, is given, isn't it, for a patriotic American? Loyalty to our Constitution. That's the charter of our land. We'd say amen to that, wouldn't we? Our Constitution is a charter of our land for the patriot. Well, what about loyalty to the Bible? What about that loyalty? How are we to learn about God and His ways apart from the Bible? A lack of contentment. Now, here, think about this now. A lack of contentment could be traced to an unread Bible. It could be traced to an unread Bible. The more we learn of God and His ways, the more we learn about the benefits of suffering because we begin to see the grand scheme of things. We do. The more we learn about God through the Bible, the more we can see the big picture 
as to why there is benefit even in suffering. You can't see that apart from Scripture. You see, and, and let me put it in this kind of a statement. A healthy spiritual state still finds a contentment state in spite of a suffering state because of a learning state. Let me repeat that. A healthy spiritual state still finds a contentment state in spite of a suffering state because of a learning state. You know, I'm not a leading authority on suffering by any means. I'm not. In fact, none of us are. I mean, who of us could write a book, really? I'm talking about really write a book on suffering as far as a major work on suffering. None of us are an authority. But, I, but here's what I want to say to my church, and I want to say to people that are watching right now, I want to give a testimony. I want to tell you this. I can say this by personal experience. I believe this. I believe that we can rub shoulders with death's door and still find peace. We can still find peace. And we can be okay one way or the other. I believe that's possible. In fact, I want to say today, I learned that. I learned that a person can rub shoulders with death and still have the peace of God and still have blessed assurance, and still know that you're a winner one way or the other. I've learned this. Uh, it's great when we have our feet above the sod, but I came to the point in my life not too many days ago where I had full peace that I'd have been a winner either way, and I really would have been a winner if my feet would have been above the clouds. I learned that. because And, and only God can bring us through something like that. I, I have learned that there's absolutely nothing in life that separates us from the love, the goodness, and the grace of God. I've learned that. In fact, and sometimes you have to be careful because sometimes when you start sharing experiences, people take you wrong. They think that you automatically feel like you're some kind of authority or you know, you have a martyr's complex or you're just kind of exploiting it, but I'm really, no, I'm not, I'm, I'm not doing that at all. I'm, I, I believe that everything happens for a reason. I believe that I stand here today preaching the Word of God because of a reason, because of a good God. But I believe if God would have taken me home, He'd been just as good too. But you know, uh, I look back and I think of some things that's happened to me. <clears throat> I think of, uh, and, and, and how many of you in this, I know Bruce has been in the hospital, Jim, you've been in the hospital, and any of you young guys back here been in hospitals? Okay, and you all know what I'm saying. When you're flat on your back and can look no way but up, it has a way of making us all realize how weak and frail we are and we begin to reflect and ponder and look at things that really matter in life. Uh, it, it makes, it, when we face, realize our immortality, or our mortality rather, and our weakness, it has a purifying way too of making us realize how good God is and how much we need Him and how much we appreciate Him. I, uh, I thought about the various nurses that attended to me when I was in a hospital. Their kindness was overwhelming. One nurse told me, she said, excuse me, I need a little bit emotional. She said to me, she knew I was a Christian, and she, of course, was a mature Christian herself, and she told me, she said, you know, she said, God has a reason for this. God can use this to help other people. That's what a nurse told me. Then when one of the 
nurse is there, and again, please take this right. She's moving me up to another floor because I'm going to be discharged the next day. <clears throat> she said, I hope that you're going to be as a good patient uh, in the next room as you've been uh, the, 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 the days you've been down here. And then she said, the nurses have told me how, <coughs> how good of a patient you've been. And I thought, boy, she only knew me. But then, I, no, here's what I reflected upon. I thought about the fact only God can take a person, settle you down, make you appreciate the kindness on the part of people, and give you a good attitude, and give you the ability to have a testimony, and leave a hospital room and have nurses to say, I saw something different about you. Only God can do that. And I learned that. And, I, and I'm thankful for it. I really am. Uh, but but I, I want to say, our lives are in God's hands. And the sooner we realize that, the better off we are. I'm asking this question, and I'm, I'm clo- coming to a close now. But have we learned contentment in spite of the 2020 sufferings? Have we learned that he is our refuge in our, in our strength in time of trouble? Have we learned where can I go but to the Lord? Have we learned that we must trust him first? Psalm has said, some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Have we learned that? Have we learned that we can't trust in chariots? Have we learned that we can't trust in horses? Have we learned that we cannot trust in politics? Have we learned that we cannot even trust in our health? Have we learned it? I hope we have, because that's a good learning curve. Have we learned still have we learned that he is still at work attempting to teach us things that are important? Have lost people, and here I want to address someone that might be watching this lost. Have you learned that the pet that the pandemic virus is not nearly as risky as a sin virus? Have you learned today that there is a virus far worse than any pandemic that's ever come down the pike historically? It's called sin. And the wages of sin is death. It'll carry your soul to hell. It'll mean you'll be lost forever. Have you learned today that the virus of sin is far, far worse and only by trusting Jesus Christ as Savior can you recover by the grace of God from that virus? Have you learned that? Have we learned that he wants us to get closer to him rather than further from him? Have we learned to be content? Whatsoever state, think about it. I've learned in whatsoever state I'm in, therewith to be content. Have we learned to be content in spite of the state of the pandemic, in spite of the state of politics, in spite of the state of suffering, can we still be content? And that's the question. If we didn't learn those things in 2020, we can learn them now. Thank God as we go into 2021. Contentment has to do with resting in his care. And by the way, the contented Christian is never robbed of their essential freedoms anyway. Did you know that? The contented Christian is never robbed from their essential freedoms. All right, proof, Bible proof, right? I know you're wanting that. Here it is. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. By the way, that's in the same chapter. By the way, that follows my text verse. By the way, it's verse 13. And my text is verse 11. And Paul said, I've learned in whatsoever state I'm in, therewith to be content. And then turns around and says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. The child of God is still not robbed of their essential freedoms. Maybe I need to explain that. We can still pray. We can still witness. We can still have joy. We can still have peace in our lives knowing that we're in God's hands 
And by the way, whether living or dying, we still are that winner. And this same apostle, he said for me to live with Christ is, is Christ and die is gain. He said absent from the body, present with the Lord. So I'm saying we can still be content in spite of the terrible things and we still don't lose our basic essential freedoms. Now, I'm not talking about the Second Amendment rights. I'm not talking about First Amendment rights. I'm not talking about the amendments pertaining to our Constitution where it's possible that a, that a government can, can become so corrupt that we may lose certain freedoms in our land. I'm talking about another category here. Essential freedoms. We still can live for God. We still can rejoice. We still can pray. We still can witness. We still can have hope in spite of all of the, of the terrible things that go on around us. Essential freedoms. Why did he say I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me if it wasn't true? So what a tremendous closing in that verse. Now, and I, my final statement is this. We don't know what to expect from the new year that's coming. We don't know. The pandemic might get worse. I hope the, uh, I hope the vaccinations work. But none of us know. There's a big shroud of mystery that covers over our land when it comes to physical security. I mean, what's to keep another pandemic from rolling, coming, coming down a pike? I mean, listen, we're all, first of all, I'd say we're all mature enough to know, but every, I know everyone here, we're spiritual enough to know that you and I, we can't, we're not, we can't read the crystal ball. We don't know what's going to happen in terms of the physical. But thank God, let me say today what we can expect. Here's what we can't expect. We can expect the same blessing from the Lord. The, the verse that I read earlier, you know, God blesses the year with his goodness. God blesses the year with his goodness. As he blessed 2020 with his goodness, and that didn't change. We can, we can expect God to bless the coming year with the same goodness. God still will save. God still is good. God will crown the year with his goodness. We need to let that soak in. And then we need to be content. In closing today, do all of you that's listening out there, Facebook, YouTube, are all of you folks confident today that your life is in God's hands? Are you confident today that you're a child of the king? Are you confident today that you're saved and en route to heaven? Do you have the confidence to say, I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day? If you have that confidence, you can go into the new year fully persuaded that God's going to keep that which he's promised you and nothing will come along that will unroot your security and rob you of your joy, and you'll have that contentment in spite of the circumstances, not because of them, but in spite of them. So I trust and I pray that all of us today will learn to be content. Let's pray. My Father, today, as I come to you in prayer, I pray, Heavenly Father, you'll see fit to honor the Word of God Thank you for the opportunity, the privilege to be back in church and how I appreciate so very much uh, Brother Bruce's preaching and Lord, uh, your goodness upon our ministry, our church here and the people, the families. Yes, we pray for those that are suffering physically, but Father, help us all to learn to be content. Lord, bless and use the message. If someone's listening unsaved, may they turn to Jesus Christ. May your people today see this as an opportunity to go back to school maybe to learn more of him and his goodness. Bless in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you today for uh, viewing, for watching, for listening. And uh, Lord willing, 
Uh, we'll be back uh, this coming Wednesday night having another service. And uh, we thank you today for your prayers, your support, and, uh, and being a part of our, uh, of our audience today. God bless you. Uh, we're dismissed. <laughs>